Welcome back guys, welcome to again CSI NET uh, module 1 biochemistry and we are talking about the amino acids and proteins and this video is going to talk about collagen and keratin. Most of the time collagen, very little about keratin. Both of them are fibrous proteins, very important fiber, fibrous proteins of our body. We have seen the globular proteins like hemoglobin and myoglobin. Now collagen and keratin, fibrous proteins, important. So let's talk about it. Let's begin with uh, collagen, which is the most abundant protein in our body because where is collagen present? Answer, where not? I mean, every tissues, you can find collagen almost everywhere. So it's the most abundant protein in human body. Answer is collagen. Now, uh, this protein is a trimeric protein, remind you. So three different peptides are produced and then they wrap around each other to form helical structure. But remember, this helix is not an alpha helix. It is not alpha helix. Be very, very careful about that. They produce helix, three chains, wound around each other, produce helix, but not an alpha helix. The triple helical uh, fibrous protein is this collagen. We all know, we have talked about. And they have a unique feature, and that feature is the production of a unique motif, and that motif is formed due to the presence of amino acid glycine, which is the simplest kind of amino acid, as we all know. Very, very simple amino acid, having only an H instead of the R group and as the R group actually. So glycine and XY. XY could be any amino acids, but usually the structure of this motif is glycine, proline, hydroxyproline. Repeated portions of glycine, proline, hydroxyproline actually allows them to produce this, this kind of three helix and wound around each other to form a helical structure to, uh, through an axis, actually. And how they actually form this, if you look at here, three different, uh, I mean, uh, thread they are just uh, wrapping around each other and during this wrapping they interact with each other one helix I mean one uh, strand one uh, monomer with another monomer they interacting via hydrogen bonding so here comes a force because always there should be a force the force that is present there to help them bind is hydrogen bond and that is the answer so they produce this hydrogen bonds, but remember the hydrogen bonding is not between the amino acid there, it's between two different separate chains. Now once they produce that, they, uh, they are good to go. Now here comes down this hydroxyproline, so from where the hydroxyproline is uh, originated. Because we all know hydroxyproline is not uh, the general amino acid uh, what we usually know about. So it's a different amino acid, it's not the essential one, so it's being made inside the body. And this amino acid is made from metabolic processes from a precursor and the precursor is ascorbic acid that's right it is ascorbic acid so from ascorbic acid via some metabolic pathway they produce hydroxyproline which is found to be playing a very important role in the production of this uh, characteristic unique motif for collagen glycine proline hydroxyproline now here we go usually people thought that proline is a kind of bulgy group it usually cannot be present but actually glycine and proline can actually stay together and they form this remarkable structure in nature and this hydroxyproline found to be a very important part of another fibrous protein that is found to name as elastin, which is also found in many tissues, uh, which also helps the tissues uh, to produce the tissue cement, so that the tissue gets attached firmly there. Uh, and this elastin is also having a very important ingredient, and that is desmosine. Desmosine is again another derivative of an amino acid that is found to be present in elastin which is unique and this desmosine is a, again a metabolic product of lysine. Remember, so you know all these things are kind of linked with each other. That's all about CSI net now. You need to learn this small bit of tricks and some important tips, you know, uh, from where you're getting all these small knowledge, small informations and all those informations. You never know where the informations will come handy. So here we go, lysine, uh, from the lysine metabolic pathway, it produces desmosine, which is a part of elastin. Now, elastin is uh, also having this hydroxyproline and hydroxyproline is produced from ascorbic acid. So that's the whole area of how they are interchanging, are kind of connected. Now if you look at here, this collagen is a fibrous protein and it is not soluble in water. It's insoluble protein. Now once it's insoluble in nature, so no need to worry about much. Now here we go, elastin is again another insoluble protein. If you look at here, uh, 
little about another fibrous protein which is keratin we haven't focused on uh, keratin yet i will talk about very later uh, very very little that alpha keratin and beta keratin there are two different types now in this alpha keratin that we talk about this keratin is the alpha helix now this is also uh, multimeric it's not a monomeric protein it's also it, it's have a two different uh, and it's a dimeric protein so two different monomers they wrapped around each other to produce this keratin but remember this is an alpha helix but remember that was not alpha helix collagen is not alpha helix keratin is alpha helix so alpha helix proteins they produce alpha helices and those helices kind of interact with each other right and what we find in alpha keratin is hydrogen bonding and hydrogen bonding between you know those uh, interaction between the, uh, the R groups and amino acids that are present and intra chain sulfide cross link now the intra chain sulfide cross link between the helices remember they are not present between amino acids I, I repeat the intra chain disulfide linkage the disulfide bridges that are found in keratin is very common but that is not present in single so so actually if these are the two different uh, say uh, monomers now in each monomer you won't find this bond you only find this bond between two different monomers that's what I'm talking about and they have hydrogen bonding between each other uh, and the hydrogen bonding is actually between the alpha helices to hold this structure together right because you know in all those fibrous proteins the exact idea of the fibrous protein in body to hold the tension and also to to stabilize our tissue so they need to have you know they need to be very strong so they are attached always with small interaction and forces like hydrogen bonding and it helps them to be organized together so that's about it See you at the next time.